Hey, my knife here, and welcome to episode 10 of Let's Play Terra Farmercraft. Uh, we've actually made it into uh, two digits. That's excellent on the episode count. Um, so first, a little bit of, I guess, an apology to you guys is I've been looking back at my earlier videos and, you know, where I'm dancing around about, oh, you know, I got 40 subscribers, I have 50 subscribers. And, well, you know, I really do enjoy it. I, I like that you guys subscribe, and it means a lot to me in that. I realize that in the grand scheme of things, it's a little bit childish for me to be dancing around about it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to tone it down a bit and, you know, like, you know, maybe when I get to a hundred, you know, I'll do some sort of special thing. And certainly if I ever manage to get to a thousand, but you know, I'm not going to do the silly little dances anymore. And, you know, so I'll just be able, try to be a little cooler, a little more low key about it. Okay. Um, now in the previous episode, what do I, so oh, God, look at all this crap I have on me. Ah, I should probably do this off camera. Let me get rid of some of this stuff off camera and then I'll come back. Okay, so last episode, <coughs> we uh, finally gotten home with this fine stuff, our bismuth. Yes, sir, Baub. And the nice thing about that is it means that we can now make ourselves some bismuth bronze, which isn't quite as good as regular bronze, but it's not all that much worse either. Okay. So what we need for that is we're going to need a bunch of bismuth. We're going to need a source of copper. And let's do this. And so all right. Okay. And we get ourselves a vessel and open it up like this. Now, um, the recipe for making bismuth bronze is you need between 10 and 20% bismuth, 20 and 30% tin, or not not tin, sorry, uh, zinc, which comes out of sphalerite, and then the rest, which will be 50 to 70% copper. Okay. Now, at the moment, I haven't, we, we've gone around, we've seen several places where we've have found, like, traces of sphalerite, but haven't actually gone and mined any of it yet. So this is just a bunch of small sphalerites that I've picked up on the, uh, picked up in, you know, from surface stones and stuff like that. So, but that's enough to uh, give us our first batch at any rate. So... We want to have, so I'm just going to make it very simple. I mean, you can try and fill this vessel up as much as possible and do lots of math to work it out. But to make things simple right now, I'm going to just say we're going to make a thousand units of uh, bronze, which will give us you know, 10 ingots. Okay. So if 10% of that has got to be bismuth, a thousand means we need a hundred. So one, two, three, four. Since each of these large guys has 24, 25 units in it, four of them will give us a hundred. Um, okay. Now we need 20% uh, zinc, which is a sphalerite. That means we need 200 sphalerite. And each of these small ones only has 10, so we only need 20 of them. So 20 times 10 gives us 200. And then all the rest has to be copper, which is going to be as tetrahedrite. So we're going to need 700 copper. So, so these are the small ones. 2 times 10 gives us 200. We need to get 500 out of these guys. That means we need, oh, we need 20 of them. Hmm, okay, let's rewind. Slight error here, because I can't put, these only stack up to 16, so I can't put 20 of them. So I'll have to do them all out of tetrahedrate. Uh, so I need 700 um, at 25 per means I need 14, 28 of them. Okay. So 16 and 12 for 28. So we have 28 times 25 gives us 700. 20 times 10 is 200, brings up 900. 4 times 25 is 100, brings us up 1,000. There we go. And while we're at it, let's fire that up and let's... Uh, I don't really know what to do here. I don't know what I'm going to need next, but yeah, we always end up needing more molds. So let's just add a couple more molds to the mix. Any dirt on us? Nope. Okay. Put that back in there. We've got... Whoa! Can't do that quite yet. To put this stuff on top first. Fifteen of these. Whee! 
That was it, right? Right. Okay, now we can put our wood on top. And I think I have a couple of these guys here. Fire starters. And let's get that going. So that's going to be eight hours. Uh, let me put this crap away. And we'll find something else to do. Uh, put more crap away. It's the Put a Crap Away Marathon. And that guy goes there. Is that it for the crap putting away? I think so. Okay. So I figure we can do is, since this is supposed to be Let's Play Terra Farmer Craft with more focus on farming, I figure we can go outside and do a little bit of farming and, and uh, just show you what the sort of day-to-day you know, day-to-day -day maintenance, because we've pretty much got our farm going at this point, right? So, it's just rotating the crop, harvesting and rotating the crops, stuff like that. But I thought that might be interesting to go through at least once. So, so let's, uh, let's come out here and see what have we got here. Well, some of the wheat has ripened up. So we can collect it up. Uh, what have we got here? Onions. Are they all ripe? Yes, they're all ripe. Okay. So let's bring in our onions. Okay, then we take our metal hoe. And, yeah, we put it into nutrient mode. And let's see. So onions like orange. What do we got that's full on orange? Oh, this guy okay. looks like he's full on orange. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so we can move our onions over to here. Ta-da! Okay, I think our squash are all ready to go as well. Yep. Okay, squashies! Why do I have so many squash? Oh, it's one in from the hole, so it's the same amount. Okay. And squash like. Oops. Squash like yellow. What? Sun setting already? Give me a break. Okay, well, this is the oat, and it leaves behind lots of yellow, so let's use him. the squash down where the oat was. And we still need to put down the oat. Can it go down where the squash was? Lots of red, yeah. Okay. Where's the oat? There. Strip the grain away from at least some of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some seeds from them. Trying to do this before the Heedly Greedly show up. And now, this will become the oats. Oat and. Yeah, I label this squash. And we'll do the rest in the morning. Well, actually, in the morning that'll be done too. So, Betty Bye. Sweet dreams. Lullabies. Actually, I guess I could eventually make note blocks and have a lullaby lull me to sleep. Maybe that's a redstone project for me. Okay. So there we go. A ceramic vessel with bismuth bronze in it. Let's have a look to see how we're doing there. Oh, I should have done a mold. Oh, I'm a fool. Where are we here? I don't have any molds for anything, do I? No. Drat. <laughs> okay, well, this is sort of a, a bit of wasted time here, but I can show it to you anyway. So you see now that we have, there's bismuth bronze in there. And I can fill up. Please, just like before, 
And now if I had thought to actually make a tool mold, I could show you me pouring it into the tool mold, just like we did with the copper, but I forget to do that. But at any rate, we still got all this copper we want to use up as well anyway. But anyway, so we now have access to bronze. We can get into the bronze age. I just have to get around to, <clears throat> to making the molds for it. But to be honest, we've still got like lots of wear left on our copper tools anyway. Now the thing we'd really like is to get into some, uh, some bronze armor. Uh, that would be nice, but to do that, we need to be able to actually start using our anvil to, you know, to make, to pound things out. And for that, we need plans. For that, we need a scribing table. And for that, we need feathers. So we're going to have to find chickens. So the, the, the need to get chickens is getting, becoming pretty, uh, pretty acute. So at some point, we're going to have to go off and actually search for them, which is going to be a real pain. Okay, uh, I'm going to just quickly take a break here while I think of what to do next. Okay, um, I guess what we should do first then is just finish up with the farming that we were doing, for which we will need a knife. Ah, oh, it's a knife. Put this guy down here. There we go. Come out here. And who's next in our hit parade? These are not all ready yet, so let's not bother with them. We can harvest these guys by right-clicking on them. And then we can take their seeds by digging them up with a left click. Okay, and... So what did they like? They liked, looks like they liked yellow. That's right. Peppers like yellow. So who we got that's here that's high in yellow? Him. Let's just check over here first. Oh, we don't have anything over here. Oh, there's... Yeah, I like that guy bear. I'm trying to keep... I, the reason I don't want to use this other one is it's also high in... Yeah, which other one? This one here. It's also high in red. And I think I'm going to need that for the rice. Or, not the rice. Oh, that's right. Rice doesn't use red. So actually, I, I don't need it for... Hmm. Can't tell what the carrots use. Looks like the carrots use red and they're about to... Anyways, I want to keep the red ones available. So let's do this guy instead. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there's our red pepper seeds. Whee! There we go, missed one. Okay. And where, oh, where did the sign go? There it is. Ooh. Okay. And this rice is ripe. And we're just looking... Oh, the rest of the rice is right here, right? And rice likes orange. Orange. There's lots of orange there. None at all there. Okay, so this is where we're going to put the rice. Apply our knife to the rice. To get some green. Take half that green. Oh, no, I have to take all of it. It in total and plant the seeds. And grab the sign from over here. And the onions, the onions are ready to come in as well. So let's do them. Oh, not onions, garlic. And the garlic liked... Garlic likes the yellow. Hmm. Well, there's lots of yellow there. Oh, it's actually... Oh. Really? Ah, uh, what the hell? Okay, we'll put it here. 
Scarlet can go here. I'll worry about the red crops when I have enough of them to worry about. I keep forgetting I don't have that many of the greens yet. So, it's typically since the greens take the longest to grow, and all of them except rice need red nutrients, then usually it's the shortage of space with red nutrients. That is the problem, but I'm not there yet. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to come in? This is not ripe yet, right? Oh, it is ripe. Oh, okay. I thought it got darker than that. I thought barley got darker than that when it was ripe. Well, then. Here's a crop that does need red nutrients. Now we have just the place for you to... As I seem to recall... This one here is chock full of red nutrients. Yeah, alright. So, barley. Strip the grain off of you. Take eight of those and convert them into seed. Put them in the ground. Stand back so we don't get hit by them as they spring up. Oh, I only wish it was that fast. Okay. Only just this one uh, cabbage so far. That's right. And I think that's pretty much it. I don't think, no, these beans aren't ready yet. Some of the carrots are. I guess I can harvest the ones that are ready. In fact, almost all of them are. Yeah, it's just the one that isn't, so we might as well look at moving them somewhere as well. Uh, what do they need? What do we decide they need? Yellow? Red? I don't think... Well, the red is definitely lower. Let's find something that has yellow and red. I think I just used one up, actually. Yeah. Just used one up that had yellow and red. That's too bad. Hmm. Well, this guy's got a little bit of yellow and lots of red, so we'll try him. Ooh, got the first pass that time. Uh, carrots. So that's, you know, once you get a garden going or once you get your farm going, that's sort of what it's like is you're just, you know, going around waiting for things to mature, you harvest them, convert them into seed, and then find a new place to grow them in. And sometimes it's like, it's kind of a comforting little thing to do after a hard day of work, and other times it's just tedious and annoying. So the other thing I should be doing is breeding these guys, but A, it's getting late in this day. And B, as I was mentioning before, the need for chickens, specifically their feathers, is getting rather urgent. So I think that's what we're going to have to tackle. I really didn't want to have to do another uh, cross-country marathon just yet. But uh, it looks like we're going to have to do that. Let's see, that's west, east, north. So this is south. So we got to go south. To the jungles, which are far, far away, alas. Um, hopefully, if we get lucky, we'll run into a chicken. We'll need a pair so we can breed them, but we'll run into some chickens before then. But odds are we'll have to go all the way to the, pretty much to the equator, 8,000 blocks away to find our chickens. And I am going to make you guys suffer through every single block of it. No, no, I won't. I'll edit out the boring parts, or at least the parts that I think are boring. Okay, so I'll bring you back when I'm ready to depart. Ciao for now. Okay, well, I did some preparations and uh, passed the night. One preparation I forgot to do was to get some food and water into me. Let's do that now. As you can see, I got a bunch of bread here and... 
and a bunch of red bell peppers. That should keep me filled up for the journey. I've got a bed, I'm bringing my saw. In here I've got a crafting table, some extra torches, and some extra wheat grain. The wheat grain is, of course, to get the chickens to follow me if we can find them. All right, and south we go. So the first part of the journey isn't gonna be all that interesting because this is just going back our to where our original mine was. So unless something leaps out and tries to attack me, I'll just edit this part out. See you at the mine. And here we are at our old tet mine, our original tet mine, which really isn't all that, we don't need it really anymore. I mean, it's a, we should put a historical marker up here. So do I have a sign? No, nah, I'll do that some other time. Put up a historical plaque. Ish was where copper was mined for the first time. But we don't need it now because we have all kinds of tetrahedrite in deposits under in the mine underneath the house. Okay, and now we want some new territory. So although we're heading south to look for chickens, I will, of course, still whack away at rocks, hoping to find some cassiterite. And the other thing I just realized recently was that we don't have any fruit trees yet. So we have, you know, what what kind of a farm is it that doesn't have an orchard? So we definitely need to work on that too. <clears throat> I don't know that I've seen any fruit trees go by yet in this in this world, which is kind of odd because I mean they're not common, but they're not particularly rare either normally. So. Nope, nothing here. As we get closer to the equator, I mean, I mean, we've only just now gone below eleven thousand, so we got a ways to go yet. Uh, what would this be? Is this more wheat? Early stage wheat, or did we finally find our rye? That gave me nothing. No, that gave me something. Rye. Aha! We now have rye. What happened to the other one? Oh, there it is. Uh, there we go. Okay. Our trip is already born. Oh, and cows. We don't have those yet either. Okay. Let's quickly mark that. So if we end up finding chickens and bringing them back this way, well, you know, we don't find them and we come back this way, we can uh, get some cows in tow as well. Uh, last episode I was talking about possibly doing, uh, recording myself while I played a couple other games. And the one that everyone seemed to be keen on was Kerbal Space Program. So I guess I'll do that. Um, and like I say, I don't, I know a little bit about it because I've played some of the tutorials, but I don't want to learn too much more about it because with me, that's frequently a lot of the fun in the game. So, so I'm kind of holding, even though I want to play it, I'm holding off until I'm ready to start actually recording videos for it. And that probably won't happen for a couple of weeks because I have to go on a trip this weekend coming up. And the weekends are generally the only time I get to uh, record the videos. Wow, still no fruit trees, huh? Oh, somebody wants to come attack me. I admire your devotion. That you would go out in the sunlight and burn. I guess that's what they mean by burning hatred. Quite literally in this case. See that torch there? It's a nice torch, isn't it? That's a very pretty torch. Where that torch is standing, there used to be a rock. I was going to say something like that rock, but it actually not at all like that rock. Like that rock there. And when I hit that rock, what I got was this. A small cassiterite. <laughs> Finally found some cassiterite. Yes, indeed. Let's mark that. 
as you can see from the numbers on the mini map, we're not too far from home, maybe about uh, 2,000 blocks, maybe a little less than that, actually. Uh, the other thing, if you, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but right beside my cursor, there's a uh, marking about 35 meters away for bismuth. So I also found some bismuth lying on the surface. So we've got another bismuth mine here that we can work on, which is good because we had pretty much taken most of the bismuth out of that other one. But this is good. This is good. So around here we've got some considerate somewhere. Come on, help me out here. There we go. Not in this direction. How about this direction? No. No. Oh, there's another one. So I'm not going to stop mine this. Oh, there's no one here, but I just thought you'd like to know that we now have a source of cassiterite, which will give us the tin we need to make regular old bronze, which is superior in every way except color to the bismuth bronze. Bismuth bronze is pretty. So I might go ahead and make armor out of bismuth bronze anyway. Simply because it looks nice. But oh, it's getting on in time. All right, I'll bring you back in when something else happens. Bye. And some more water. Oh, I'm not sure, but I think I think this may be the first time we've run into little clouds, isn't it? Hmm. I wonder if they're temperature dependent. Or, well, not temperature so much. If they're biome dependent or something. Like that. Well, they're obviously biome dependent. But, I mean, what, am I, what do I mean? Latitude. Latitude. If they're dependent on your latitude. So we're about 3,000. I can go around this way, I guess. We're about 3,000 from home. Oh, I, the other thing. Yeah, if you look down here. You'll see with these, I got 39 of these small cassiterite now. Uh, after that first cassiterite deposit that I showed you, uh, I didn't find any more after I stopped recording. Not in that deposit, but in the like kilometer and a half, like the 1500 blocks since then, I think I'll pick up some more of these lily pads. I found, I don't know, like, well, let's have a look here. How many more considerate deposits do I find? Here we go. So here's that first considerate deposit right here, 15. And I found some bismuth near there. And then I found more considerate and bismuth. And then so it's one, two, three, four, f one, two, three, four, five, six. I found six more deposits in the next kilometer and a half. Now, some of those were close enough together that they might be the same. I might have just been getting separate readings off of the same deposit, but that would make them fairly large deposits, which would be great. But, you know, regardless, that's like a lot of consider. Oh, here's some more bismuth night too. But, uh, I mean, in part, it's just because now we're into the right rock types. Before, it was all sedimentary around our homeland, or homeland, home base. It's all pretty much sedimentary rock types. Which are less likely to, I think, are less likely to have cassiterite. Getting a bit of a lag here. Oh, and I'm losing some lily pads. Okay, there we go. And now we're into more, um, like I think there's a granite here. So we're into the more of the metamorphic and uh, igneous rocks. Which are likely to host that kind of stuff. So that would explain why we're getting more of it, but still. <laughs> I was quite a bit in such a short period of time. Anyway, just it was really li the lily pads I brought you in to see because because I think that's that's something new for us here. I'll bring you back in when there's something else I want to show you or tell you. Ooh, see, more is it right? Uh -huh. Actually, I can probably stop recording these now. Be almost tempting to move the homestead here if I didn't already have so much time invested in it. Back where it was. Anyway, as I said, I will bring you back. 
man, oh man, is there ever a lot of wood in that tree. If I wasn't concerned about filling up my inventory, I would chop that bugger down just to count it. Well, if our journey is, uh, our quest here, if it's unsuccessful, we don't find any chickens. Maybe that'll be the consolation prize. We'll come back and chop that guy down and just see how big he is. Oh, ah, there we go. That is a fruit tree. Oh, more considerate. hoo -ya. Up to 53 of the little buggers now. 54. Soon I'll have a full set. I can trade it in for a secret decoder ring. All right. Yes, okay, so um, for fruit trees, what you do is see these these branches sticking out of it. You never want to chop down the stem, but these cross piece branches sticking out here, you chop them off. And oh, we got lucky first time around. You don't always get it, but you sometimes get a sapling. What is it? It's a red apple tree. There we go. Cool. Eh, we only need one. I'm not greedy. Uh, but just in case we die or something, let's mark this spot. Okay, so we finally we, we will finally have a start to our orchard when we get back. So even if we don't find any chickens, heaven forbid, this will still have been a successful outing insofar as we found rye. We found a bunch of chunks that don't load. We found cassiterite, lots and lots of cassiterite. And we found our first, our first fruit tree. Yeah, I keep trying to force myself to say our instead of our for O-U-R. Just one of those little things. I've always said R, but I'm not a pirate. I shouldn't have be saying R, I should be saying our. All right, I'll bring you back in when there's something more interesting than pirate talk. Ciao. Well, it was a good run, but it's come to an end. I don't mean this entire journey, but so far I've managed to stay pretty much on land the entire time. I haven't had to build a boat yet. I had a couple of short swims over a few small channels. I don't like using a boat because of that uh, leg problem where the... Uh, server and the client get out of sync but oh I guess I'm going to need some wood first so I'm going to chop down some wood here make myself a boat and head off across the great waters to the south to see what awaits us in the tropical climes well as you can see if you look in the uh, in the Z coordinate under the mini map, I'm just 332 meters from the equator now. One nice thing about traveling by boat, it may be kind of deadly boring, but at least it's fast. And uh, the good news is there's some land here. The bad news is it's not jungle. And jungle is what we want because that's where chickens hang out. So the question is how best to explore around here? I'm thinking, shoot around a bit on the boat. Does this open up in here? Probably not. No, okay. So I think that's what I'll do, is I'll just scoot, what direction is this, east? Head east for a bit and then see if I see any jungles show up. Because the boat's going to be, as long as the water stays fairly open, the boat's going to be faster than climbing mountains and all this sort of stuff. So we continue to hunt for jungle, but we're here at the equator now, so we'll run into some sooner or later. Bring you back in when I find it. Okay, so this is kind of funny. I This is still the same landmass. I came around to the east and, and, and it ended out here, and so I headed further south and came around here, and uh, the sun was setting, so I just pulled in here and set up my bed for the night. 
but to the south it hadn't finished rendering yet but now when I get in the morning it finally finished rendering and there's some jungle so it's quite handy let's head on over and have ourselves a look whoops boat's having some trouble there we go well, in fact the jungle looks like it even extends a bit into here well that's excellent let's just head on over here uh, yeah a little bit of it but the main part of the jungle appears to be over here which is good and then we get the fun of trying to find our way through a jungle which is can be even more aggravating in TFC than in uh, than in regular Minecraft because remember that in TFC you can't walk on leaves so as you walk through the jungle you get a lot of this not being able to see where the hell you're going so what I try to do is at least initially is kind of just stick to the edges one around the edges of the jungle and see if I can uh, hear the cluck cluck sounds. Yeah, so these um, Kopak, Kopak? Kapok, Kapok trees, that's what these big ones are that grow in the jungle here. Much like the Sequoia, they do, they do not drop seedlings. So you can whack away at their leaves all you want, but you won't get any seedlings. And that's just basically the game's way. They'd be too overpowered otherwise, right? You'd just get a couple of Sequoia or Kapok seedlings, and then that would be your wood need satisfied for the rest of the game. So, so instead you have to find yourself, get yourself about a dozen uh, willows instead. So really I don't know if it makes that big of a difference, but I can understand why they tried But yeah, so that's another thing that, you know, if I end up spawning, I usually try and try and have a go of it as close to my spawn 